Hello everyone, it's Sam over at ScorpioRisingAstrology.com and we are here continuing our Signs 101 series with uh, a Wednesday recording of the two Mercury-based signs, Gemini and Virgo. In this video we will be experiencing the latter, uh, the maiden of grain and uh, organizer extraordinaire, she who is Virgo. Um, for those of you who have strong Virgo placements, buckle up, we're about to expose all of your internal secrets um, but it is one of my personal favorite signs uh, I gotta I gotta be honest so let's go ahead and let's go uh, go on to the uh, PowerPoint presentation and we will shake it up okay so Virgo here we can see a nice little um, constellation map of Virgo I always love that image um, one of the things that I've learned about Virgo is that she is the practically perfect sign. And I say she because each sign is associated with a gender, but obviously there are male Virgos and there are female Virgos and there are males and females and everybody in between. Gender is an irrelevant construct um, by, social, uh, by social past uh, power grabs. And when we look at Virgo, I always think of Mary Poppins. I always think of Mary Poppins. It's just something that is, is in my head when I think of the energy of Virgo, the attributes of Virgo. And one of the things that Mary Poppins is, is she is practically perfect. Um, and so I always think of Virgo as the practically perfect sign. Um, one, because practically, uh, the, the ability to be practical is Virgo. Uh, Virgo is about doing things that are practical, doing them the right way the first time, doing them efficient, efficiently, and being efficient. But then also, Virgo strives towards perfection. It is a perfectionist sign. Now, that is also what gets it in trouble, um, but the idea of practically or practicality and perfection or being perfect, uh, those are together kind of what makes Virgo a Virgo. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll pull up Virgo's stats and talk about why this sign is practically perfect. So first and foremost, one thing that I wanted to kind of bring to the attention is I choose an image for each sign. And here I've chosen the image of grain or wheat. Um, and that is very much part of Virgo's archetype, although she's known as the virgin. Yeah, um, I don't really like the idea of the virgin to associate with Virgo um, because some of the dirtiest people that I know are Virgos. Um, but at the same time, there is a there is a certain amount of that label that does uh, come forward as true with the the need to be clean, uh, the need to constantly rise above um, or be above, kind of being pious. Um, but I prefer the archetype of the grain goddess. I prefer um, the the harvesting of wheat as a as a Virgo image because wheat is resource, yeah, especially any any crop particularly, but the crop that is abundant, the crop that spreads over fields that are wide and golden and rich, and the grains that would feed uh, a, a whole town over the course of the year, they are a primary staple resource. And Virgo comes in with this grain and harvests it and allocates it into bundles and packages that are accessible. You know, two bundles go to this family because they require it, three bundles over here, um, and 30% gets stored for next year's planting, and, you know, then we, we have to store the rest uh, for the winter months, and Virgo is very much about the allocation of resources, and I like the I like the idea of Virgo as the grain goddess and Virgo as the sign that comes in that measures and allocates um, those resources to the public. Uh, as opposed to just saying, oh, it's Virgo the Virgin. No, Virgo has a has a management quality to it. And I think the management of practical resources like food and grain um, are very much, but also we could look at modern day resources like money and Excel spreadsheets, you know, and accounting software. You know, Virgo always has that edge of needing to measure, needing to order, and needing to uh, pass out resources so that everybody can be efficient, but making sure that nobody gets their unfair share as well. 
Virgo's element is the element of earth, which is where, again, the grain comes in. Um, Virgo as an earth element tends to be a little bit more grounded, tends to be a little bit more about managing resources, things that are tangible, things that can be held, things that can be manipulated or measured, yeah? Um, as opposed to things like air. And even if we wanted to measure air, we could, right? But the idea of measuring something concrete um, and having something that is able to be ingested and digested and really uh, processed effectively, something that can be held, something that has value. Yeah, Virgo is very much an earth element sign because of that. But Virgo is a unique earth element because unlike Cardinal Capricorn, uh, or a uh, fixed Taurus, we have Virgo, which is mutable. So mutable Virgo comes in and says, yes, Earth is solid. Yes, Earth is um, dense. Yes, Earth is stable. But we need to break up that stability. We need to um, portion is a good word for Virgo. Those resources in such a way that, yes, they provide that stability, but that stability can be moved and shifted and kind of chess pieced around so that the resources can be applicable. Yeah, the resources can be used. Um, the idea of mining is very much a Virgo trait. Um, going into a field or a crop or a cave and excavating value, uh, separating the clumps of earth, things that are not valuable from things that are valuable. We see that a lot in the medical astrology aspect of Virgo ruling the small intestines and the ability to dis discern and discriminate between, okay, this is valuable food and medicinal resource that the body will need. This can be passed along as waste, right? That's, that's kind of Virgo's aspect. But Virgo is still ruled by Mercury. So we have that idea of travel. We have that idea of intellect. Um, a lot of the Virgos that I meet are very, very smart. Um, and some of them are book smart, especially if they have a well-placed Mercury. But a lot of them are street smart. Um, a lot of them can walk into a room and say, no, you can do this better. Um, and this is how. They just know. They have an eye for efficiency. Um, and that's, that's really something that I admire very heavily about Virgo. Um, the, I know it's, it's a little bit of an outdated reference, and it will get more outdated as this, as this recording gets viewed later on, but the idea of Marie Kondo. Yeah, Marie Kondo was a Libra, so it's not a perfect example, but her idea of um, organizing yeah, and organizing things into small bundles and to make sure that there is a ritual and there's a way to do things, um, that, is, that is very much a Virgo concept. Again, separating things into packages where they are accessible. The symbol of Virgo is an M with, a, with an extra little curve to it. Now this is, we could think of, just like we did for Scorpio, being ruled by Mars, yeah? Um, and so we have the M for Mars with the little devil tail. Uh, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. And so we have an M with a little bit of a, uh, an extra tail. Um, so that's that's how I remember. That's how I remember Virgo. Um, uh, one of one of the fun things with this this symbol, I always think of Virgo because they're constantly trying to manage um, uh, the literal M of Virgo, which stands for Mercury grows another arm uh, in order to help with the the workload. And that that I think is my how I picture it is Virgo with another arm because that's what's most helpful to a Virgo is just why don't I just grow an extra arm or why can't I duplicate myself? You know, again that mercury that gemini quality um in order to find a, a more efficient way of doing things so that's that's kind of the symbol of, of virgo virgo's highest virtue is management um, so the ability to enter any situation and to control it uh, virgo is kind of known as a control freak uh, it is it is kind of the control freak of the zodiac I think second maybe only to Aquarius, if that. 
if that. Um, but Virgo really is the the archetype of the manager. Um, I find that when what Virgo does well is they know how to smell again inefficiency. They know how to smell disorganization. They are very good at implementing processes and procedures. And so that kind of all comes down to the idea of Virgo being the, the manager, right? Now, the deepest weakness of Virgo is the anxiety that comes with that level of control and management. Like being a control freak, Virgo is just like just like Gemini is associated with the, the mental disorder of bipolar, um, Virgo is also associated with the um, mental, uh, mental emotional complex of OCD obsessive compulsive disorder. And so I think that that's really interesting, both signs being ruled by Mercury, the planet of the mind, both having strong mental disorder associations as well. The anxiety that comes from uh, the need to constantly be in control, I'm reminded of a, a phrase that my, my very first yoga instructor taught me. Um, and she said, if you stop manually turning the world, does the world stop turning? And a Virgo would automatically answer, of course, you know, because it's my responsibility to make sure that the sun comes up, that the flowers bloom, that the rivers are moving. Like Virgo is so in it. Um, and that can be wonderful, but they do tend to micromanage. Um, and they will be sucked up and sucked into the same details that they're trying to manage to, to the degree that they will break down in anxious fits because you can't possibly control it all, right? Um, and that is, that is the crux of Virgo is, yes, they are very, very good at creating order from disorder, but at the same time, it can leave them rather strung out in the process. Virgo needs order, um, but more importantly, Virgo needs a routine. Uh, Virgo needs to wake up, eat the same thing for breakfast every single day. Uh, Virgo needs to have a stricter diet. Um, again, being associated with the small intestines, what Virgo eats is very important because um, it is kind of the a primary body system for them to focus on. But more, more important than diet, we're really, really looking at the idea of a routine, a schedule, um, because what can be predicted yeah, and what can be managed and measured gets done. Um, Virgo rules the to-do list. And so that's, that's very much the energy that we're doing here and what Virgo thrives in. Now, a list can always be changed. Things can always be crossed off, erased, and added. And that's the mutable component of Virgo. So it's not a fixed list by any means, but we need to have a track list of what's happening throughout the day in order for the nervous system to find some semblance of calm. The, the mind looks at the list as saying, okay, I've conceptualized my day. I've rationalized my day. I can now visually and mentally and emotionally prepare for what's on that list. Without that list, Virgo plunges into chaos. Yeah. And then also the idea of measurement. Again, what gets measured gets done. Um, and when, when we look at measurements, um, some of the most insane Virgos that I've had where their placements were very mismanaged and not watered correctly, not nurtured correctly. Um, they, they specifically put measurements on everything. Every container of everything that was in their house had a kind of full, uh, three quarters full, half full, one quarter full, um, and when to go to the store. Uh, and that, that was a little bit excessive. Right. But at the same time, it's what calmed their nervous system. Now, there are plenty of other ways that we can calm the nervous system of a Virgo other than enhanced measurement. But again, we're looking at rituals. We're looking at routine. We're looking at order. Anything that starts to rationalize and starts to um, starts to give a sense of 
when things need to happen uh, through the measurement or the extreme examination of things is, is what Virgo enjoys and needs. Virgo loves to read the nutritional facts on food um, because they're very picky, uh, but also very picky about what they put into their bodies. Um, and I think, it's, I think it can be a beautiful thing. I also think it can cause a little bit more stress than, than, it, than it deserves. Uh, and we see this a lot with Venus, goddess of love and abundance, um, who is unconditional in her affections. You know, she has her detriment in Virgo uh, because love is not supposed to be conditional. And Virgo is the sign of conditions and measurement. How much love do I give you today? Uh, that is not Venus's archetype. Venus gives love indiscriminately to whoever asks because love is, love is abundant and universal. And the cup continuously overfloweth. Virgo wants to measure that cup and see how much it can hold, but you can't measure or control a mythical cup like the Holy Grail, which constantly spits out the fountain of youth and, and love and abundance. Like, you just can't. So that's, you know, Virgo in its seek to measure everything often forgets the spiritual um, in, in that pursuit. Virgo is smothered by chaos, but I put an asterisk here for a very interesting reason. Virgo is one of those signs where it is smothered by chaos. It absolutely hates chaos and clutter and inefficiency and disorder, but it also thrives in it. Damn. Um, and that's, that's the catch-22 of Virgo, is if Virgo doesn't have a project, if Virgo isn't actively chewing on something to make it more efficient, if Virgo isn't constantly, constantly trying to micromanage something that it views as inefficient in order to make it more efficient, Virgo's nervous system will just collapse in on itself. And that's another shadow side that I see a lot with Virgo is unless they have something that they're working on, that could be a side hustle, that could be working on a spouse's business. That could be creative projects. Yeah. But if they, even if work starts to get too humdrum, yeah, or if they feel like they're not being given a challenge, yeah, Virgo will, will start to fall apart. Um, because unless there is a fire for Virgo to put out, it, it starts to make Virgo restless. Because when they can't, actively sick their nervous system, like sick their nervous system like a dog on a problem, um, then their nervous system starts to turn inward and starts to pick them apart, right? And that's where we get the anxiety from, um, is Virgo, unless they have a task in front of them that they're actively trying to make better, um, their nervous system just starts to, to pick themselves apart. And that can be very, very harsh. Uh, because Virgo is picky and Virgo is very scrutinizing. Uh, and when that turns inward, it often brings a lot of, um, a lot of self-esteem issues to the surface. So that is Virgo in a nutshell. Virgo is practically perfect um, in every way, uh, except for the ways that we've listed. Um, and Virgo can be a very tricky sign and a very tricky placement to, to master if you don't understand how Virgo ticks and how Virgo works. So, but it is still one of my favorite signs. I love Virgos. Uh, they are very, very much my, some of my favorite people. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation on Virgo, the second Mercury ruled sign as we record on this Wednesday, Mercury's Day. If you have anything that maybe I've missed or if you have additional questions, feel free to comment below on the video. Stay tuned, subscribe, because we'll be doing these for all of the signs. Make sure to stay tuned for your sun sign, your rising sign, and your moon sign just to get your core three personality uh, a little bit more understood. Yeah. Um, I am a professional astrologer, though, so if you do have some Virgo placements that you're trying to understand or work out, you can always schedule a consultation with me. We can go one-on-one -on -one with your natal chart. Uh, just go to ScorpioRisingAstrology.com, click the consultations page, and submit a consult request. Or if you're interested in learning more about the signs or learning about astrology in general, you can always go to my website and click the online classes page, where I have tons of downloadable classes that teach you more about the signs, the planets, the aspects, the houses, and about Bunch of other astrology stuff that I find super interesting, and you might too. But until next time, uh, we will bid you adieu, and may the stars be ever in your favor.